used to uh, hearing uh, uh, the commercial to uh, time them. But uh, today's show is being brought to us in part uh, by BoxingBrainHealth.com. Uh, Treat your brain. That's right. Check out what I'm talking about. Visit uh, BoxingBrainHealth.com uh, uh, for all the information uh, about that. And uh, if you want to think a little clearer and uh, be on uh, uh, the right path of uh, taking care of your brain the way you take care of the rest of your body, uh, see what I'm talking about uh, by visiting www.boxingbrainhealth.com. And uh, joining us right now is my man Dax Khan. What's up, Dax? What's going on, Bill? How well, are not, you doing today? Not, uh, not. Too good if you're a sound system for me, but uh, a lot of stuff uh, has been going on, and I know you and I have uh, spoke uh, several times uh, about this whole uh, uh, Pritchard Cologne situation, and and you're you're pretty uh, uh, pretty uptight about it. You've uh, spent uh, uh, several days uh, on this whole topic from the time the fight took place, and uh, you've talked to me a bunch of times on it, and. Uh, uh, it's a serious situation, and I know it means a lot to you. So uh, I wanted to give you a, a platform to tell us all about what's going on. The last thing that I had heard that uh, basically uh, the medical staff has said, uh, "Good luck." Uh, he's, uh, you know, it's up to his body now whether he's going to recover or not. What's going on with this situation? Well, the good, the good news on that is, you know, uh, Ricardo Colon Melendez. Richard's brother, you know, stated that today the doctor in charge, you know, gave the green light. They took him off the station completely. Um, you know, they, they dropped the station from 4 to a 2. They're going to monitor the results, uh, you know, and now they're just hoping that he wakes up, you know, and that, that's where he stands right now. But, you know, in, in terms of the situation, Bill, you know, this is an unfortunate affair for so many reasons. This didn't only affect the life of a 23-year-old preacher Cologne, but, you know, an entire sport and community of boxing fans, you know, I felt this across the country. You know, this unfolded in front of us. You know, Pritchard's, you know, a well-liked young fighter, you know, always classy, um, you know, walks around with a smile on his face, always wearing a KO autism shirt, a uh, cause that he feels strongly about. Uh, you know, the night of the fight, he was uh, wearing a golo on the back of his trunks in uh, remembrance of Juan Golo Gomez, who passed away uh, last month after a long illness, you know, because of the feeling of Trinidad. And this is also an incident that could have been avoided. Fights get rough, Bill. They get out of hand at times. We see bizarre things happen in boxing. For as much real as it is, there's an alternate universe at times. Um, we see fights. People fly into the rings on parachutes. They dive out of the rings. <laughs> Guys go through ropes. They enter rings on a horse. You know, boxing, you know, it is part of the show. It's part of the entertainment. You know, between the ropes, though, is real. This wasn't a single blow. It wasn't an accident. Um, the, the whole sole purpose of a fight is, you know, for guys to build a legacy and a future of themselves. You know, everybody has a dream of, of becoming a champion. Um, you know, Joseph, both, both Joseph Cooper and Terrell Williams, um, even though Williams is not publicly said he's sorry, and he might have been, but you know what? They both have a history of incidents that have affected other fighters, and the fact that they, they're allowed still to go into the sport on a regular basis. You know, it, it's criminal, and, and it's sickening. You know, you know, I broke this fight down, Bill, you know, round by round, all the fouls, the incompetence. I've spoken with the Virginia Commission, even as recently as today, uh, you know, where everything went wrong, why the fight ever took place in the first place. You know, keep in mind, when, when I break this fight down, you know, everybody was listening. I watched this fight five times, and then I watched it three times in slow motion. I counted the fouls, the moment they happened, the looks on the face of Terrell Williams, the position of Joseph Cooper, where he was when fouls happened, when he was out of place, uh, the words of the announced team, Marv Albert, Ray Leonard, B.J. Flores, the doctor, unaudible comments have been passed on to me by people who were ringside when they learned I'd be coming on to this. And then after that, I think, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the history of Joseph Cooper, Terrell Williams, and what Virginia intends to do about this situation. Um, now, you know, I know that it, this is beyond, obviously, the uh, the injury itself. It, 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 you're, and you're basically what you're going to get to is that you think that this could have been prevented? This, this could have been prevented. If this matter of fact, both Joseph Cooper and Terrell Williams, people should have taken a better look at them before this fight, long before this fight. And we'll, we'll start out with the night of the fight. You know, uh, the fight started in the first round with Pritchard Cologne. He was landing combinations on Williams. You know, Williams was landing an occasional counter. In the first 30 seconds, it appeared 
on William's face to me, he was not happy with what was going on already. He seemed to already know that he was fighting an uphill battle because Pritchard looked very good. And this is an important thing to keep in mind because of the comments and actions of how the fight progressed. Uh, you know, at 50 seconds into the round would be the first foul. Just prior to the foul, uh, Williams looked at Cooper, uh, you know, after he gets caught with that one hook, and you see he's not appreciating what's going on, and he gestures he's fouled. It was a clean punch from Pritchard Cologne. Williams also seems to get a little bit of a smirk on his face, you know, you know when he complained at Cooper, you know, almost like he had him on the hook. He, he knew he was going to be able to play his cards. At the eight-second mark, Williams directly at Cologne's head while pinning his arm, with, uh, he was pinning his uh, right arm with his left arm, and uh, he was looking for openings, and he landed ended his second foul. At the end of the round, the PBC crew would acknowledge the blow, but then state, I don't think it was intentional. At no point in time, Bill, did anybody address the antics by Williams or the fact he complained about the clean blow, yet they had, later on in the fight, made references to things that Pritchard Cologne did. And the second round, there was two fouls in that round. Round two, at 245, Cologne lands a flurry. Williams spins, goes behind him, looks directly at the back of the head of Pritchard Cologne. Cologne has his glove up there. There's, you know, in a, in a prime spot. There's no open spot. So Williams didn't throw at that time. I stress what's obvious because you see where the eyes land. During the whole fight, the eyes go to the same place. He focuses on that head. At the 140 and 30 second mark, Williams lands behind the head. A low blown lands at the 20 second mark. Still, no call by referee Joe Cooper, who's seen this several times. His eyes were right on it. At 3,000 in the second round. Round three, at the 220, after a clinch, Cologne is bent over. He extends his hands outwards as if to say, let us up, wait for the ref to break him up. Williams throws kidney shots. At the 156 mark, Cologne misses a hook. Williams steps aside, lands to the back of the head. That will be the first time Cologne goes down. Cooper makes the slip. No call on Terrell Williams. Another kidney shot is landed at the 125 mark in the clinch by Williams. At 103 in the clinch, you see Williams directly at the back, look directly at the back of Cologne's head with no clean shots available. Williams sees it, waits for the ref to break, but again, focuses on the back of the head. The 24-second mark in the clinch, Williams throws a short hook followed by the elbow in the back of the draw. At four rounds in the third, that one, I have to say, Joe Cooper was not in position. At 150, Williams is bent over. Cologne is leaning on him a bit. Instinctively, you can see Williams attempting to throw over the back of Pritchard Cologne's shoulder. At 135, there's an unintentional blow by Williams. One of the very few unintentional blows. At the 125 mark, two intentional blows are landed with Joseph Cooper looking directly at them. 106, you hear Sugar Ray Lennon stating clearly, Williams is looking frustrated in reference to the, the look on the face and the antics of Terrell Williams having to deal with the boxing ability of Pritchard Cologne. At the one-minute mark, a headlock ensues. The fights get sloppy. Cooper, instead of asserting his authority, says, let's go to work. At the 14-second mark, another shot by Williams lands behind the ear of Cologne. There's three fouls in the fourth round. Round five, at 208, an intentional punch to the back of the head, landed by Williams, still is another punch behind the head. Unintentional, but Cooper was there. The two-minute mark, fighting in close. Cologne lets loose an uppercut. May or not have been intentional straight low. We don't know. This would be the first and only low blow and anything that could be considered a foul by Pritchard Cologne. Williams plays himself to the referee. He rolls on the floor. He gets up, starts cursing, acting belligerent. He, he looks over at Cologne after he's directed to a neutral corner. Um, you know, there's about five, nine seconds go by after he gets up. And then all of a sudden he dives on the mat. He's rolling around occasionally. You see him glance over at Joseph Cooper. He's seemingly satisfied that Joseph Cooper is concentrating on Cologne, looking for a reason to sit there and, and take a point. Williams gets up, amazingly recovered, as soon as he sees Joseph Cooper over there admonishing Pritchard Cologne. He recovers instantly, Bill. Williams, after he is up, starts making gestures toward the crowd. He's making throat slit gestures towards Cologne. He's screaming at the crowd. It was just a tap, and he smiles. At this point, without warning, Cooper deducts two points from Cologne. It was the first foul, as I stated, who even inquired to Joseph Cooper, what about the blows behind the head? This is something that Joseph Cooper said, which I have heard in other fights. You take care of that. 
Cologne asks again, and then Joseph Cooper repeats, you take care of that. You know what I'm saying. And he points to Bridget Cologne as he says it. Cooper looks at Williams, says, don't retaliate. Then at the 29th second mark, another behind-the-head blow is landed. Cooper warns Williams half-heartedly, no authority, watch it more or less. P.J. Flores, at one point in time during the round, made a comment about the foul, stating, fighters are taught maybe to do something to gain time, slow the guy down. The question is, in those remarks, what was he talking about? Was he talking about the overreaction of Williams, who was rolling on the floor trying to buy time? Or was he talking about Pritchard Cologne's blow? Either way, it was addressed, Bill. There's another foul, one foul by Cologne, and the only one in that fight, another foul, and headshot by Williams, and a blown call by Cooper. There's another two rounds. Goosen in the corner tells Williams that Cologne is looking for a way out. Round six, the round begins with Flores talking about the two-point deduction, how it was excessive. The Amir Khan and Lamont Peterson fight is referenced to by Marv Albert and the history of Joseph Cooper's unfair calls. The 238 mark, Williams pulls the back of the head of Cologne down as he's uppercut, uppercutting. At 232, Cooper tells both fighters he's going to disqualify him, but then again, he does nothing about it in terms of Williams. At the 208, Williams lands behind the ear. At the 157 mark, Williams bends over. Cologne has a clear shot to the back of the head. He did, He looked at it, sort of debated it. I would have, too. He doesn't take it. Anytime the two fighters are tangled up to this point, Cologne is the one that Cooper always speaks to. At the midway point of the 10-round distance, there were over 10 fouls by Williams, several unintentional hits behind the head, but they were all wrong, and Joseph Cooper seen more than less. This is when, Bill, we start noticing the body language of Pritchard Cologne chasing, changing. You know, the, the, and, you know, when he comes into round seven, you know, you see Pritchard Cologne is not really steady on his feet. He's, also, he's a little bit clumsy, too. Um, he actually uh, trips over his own feet at one point in time and almost goes into the corner. At the 53-second mark, a blow lands behind the ear of Cologne. At the 34-second mark, a shot behind the head drops Cologne. There was an uppercut first. Williams steps to the side, looks at the back of Cologne's head. Cologne was slightly bent over. Then Williams lets loose a punch that drops Cologne. He had to step around. There's no way you're going to land a headbutt. I land an uppercut and then accidentally get behind the head. He stepped. Cologne was leaning forward. After this, Williams is sent to a neutral corner. He mocks Cologne, and then he leaves the neutral corner as Joseph Cooper's looking at him. This is when Joe Goosen tells the referee, stop the fight. After the low blow in the fifth from Cologne, when, Williams, when the Goosen was telling Williams he wanted to weigh out, even at this point in time, makes you wonder, Bill, Goosen even knows there's something going on. B.J. Flores states it was clearly illegal. Then the BBC team would change that to Williams' punch was in motion already. The blow behind the head, you know, was just, there was no way to justify it. Ray Leonard, during the five-minute timeout for that blow behind the head, starts stating, Cologne seems on William in terms of wanting to uh, continue. He's questioning his desire. Williams is screaming towards the crowd, I tapped him. He's laughing at his handiwork. The ringside physician examines Cologne briefly. Cologne states, I am dizzy, but wanted to continue. There's two fouls that round, clear fouls. Round eight. As that enters, Farhood has it 66-64 in favor of Williams, meaning that two-point deduction is the only thing that has, that has him up in that fight. Then at 107 of the round, a hook followed by the elbow lands to the jaw. Joe Cooper is again at a position. The 55-second mark, a clinch happens. A headbutt, then a push from the under part of Williams' glove directly to the face clone, and then there's an elbow mix in. And then at 29 seconds, there's a shot behind the ear. The 10-second mark, there's a shot behind the head. Finally, Joseph Cooper decides to deduct one point. At the round's end, Goosen praises Williams in the corner. He's proud. He's beaming. If he was a cat, Bill, he'd have licked himself. I promise you. Five fouls that round. Round nine. At the 240 mark, Williams is behind Cologne, looking to hit the head again until he looks right at Joseph Cooper, who for once is looking right at him. At the 228 mark, a hook with an elbow to the side of the head lands. At the 213 mark, another push to the face. Cooper says something to Cologne, nothing again assertive, nothing again to Williams at the 149 mark, an elbow behind the jaw. At the 53 second mark, behind the head. At the 39 second mark, an elbow to the jaw in the clinch. At the 35 second mark, a push 
Why he's holding Richard Cologne, he's going forward, he pushes him down into the ropes. It's called official. Even the PBC team questioned the call. At the 13-second mark, Williams has a clear view of the back of the head. He pauses, then he hits Pritchard Cologne behind the head. Cologne goes down, and once again, Joseph Cooper calls it. Seven fouls in the ninth round. After the ninth dance, PBC calls it official standing. The foul behind the head was clear. No mention of where it lands. They just continue to talk about the fact that that was a genuine knockdown, trying to alleviate what happened by saying the first knockdown into the ropes, you couldn't really call that official. This was definitely official. Sure, he was down, but that was not a legal knockdown. The round ends. Cologne's corners in chaos. They're cutting off the gloves. No one's concerned about what happens. No one is talking about the fouls. They're only concerned that Cologne's corner is cutting the gloves off around early. Cooper informs the corner what round it is. He encourages them even to put the gloves back on. They start putting the gloves back on. The guy is looking for a way out. Remember when you said that, Ray Leonard? If a guy's looking for a way out, he's not trying to put the gloves back on after they take it off. The commission informs the rep to call the DQ. There's a total of 30 fouls by Williams with one point deducted. Richard Cologne, he hits one low, he gets two points deducted. Richard Cologne is the one that collapses in the dressing room. Richard Cologne is the one that underwent emergency surgery. Williams brags. Williams is in interviews talking about, I did what I had to do on videos, interviews, in print, on videos across YouTube. He was proud of himself. Joe Goosen holds him up, parades him around the ring. The PVC talks about how it was a great win for him. And who now, Bill, who now is standing up and saying anything for Pritchard Cologne other than his family and friends? Where's the PVC and where is everybody else right now screaming out justice for Pritchard Cologne? Ban Joseph Cooper, ban Terrell Williams for life. Dax, uh, you know, I got a couple questions for you. Um, uh, you know, he, he, here's the thing I want to know, first of all. Uh, when, when we talked uh, uh, originally about this, I, I was under the impression, and, and now I think maybe I misunderstood you, but did uh, Pritchard Cologne's corner realize that there was something wrong with Cologne and that's why they were cutting the gloves off at the end of the ninth? Uh, uh, or was it indeed... A mistake that they thought that that was the tenth round. I mean, which which was it? I think there was a little bit of chaos. I believe there was a little bit of panic. I, I wasn't in the corner. Nobody else was in the corner. Uh, you know, you're considering the situation. You know, considering it, it was obvious even when you're looking on TV that you know Pritchard. You know, the body language changed on him. You know, the, the, and uh, in a second, I'm going to tell you about somebody else that's happened with that also Terrell Williams fought. The body language on Pritchard changed. Pritchard, you know, he was fighting back. He, he was doing his best, but he wasn't as crisp as he was. I don't know if the corner thought that, um, you know, the, the, the fight was over. I don't know if they were just saying, you know what, we got to get out of here. But point of the matter is, when you look at that fight, even Joe Goosen saying stop the fight, whether or not he's hoping that his managers get an easy win and they don't have to go any further. The doctor said he's dizzy, so I'm guessing, and I can only assume until I speak to somebody further from Pritchard Cologne's corner and his family, I can only assume at this point in time Considering they were there when the doctor spoke, look at how many blows that he received. You know, that, that was probably the last thing on their mind, whether it was the ninth round, uh, you know, it was going to the tenth round. You know, all that part is very confusing, but that doesn't change what happened, unfortunately. Now, this fight was in West Virginia or Virginia? Virginia. All right. So, so this doctor was a Virginian doctor. And, you know, from what we learn, especially today in, in professional sports, not just boxing, but all professional sports, that concussion is the, the most serious thing. And, and, and that's what they're trying to protect. You know, uh, Larry Hazard uh, tells his referees it's better to stop a fight sooner than later. And, and the whole thing is to protect fighters. I got to ask, you know, if a fighter is telling a doctor... Not his corner man, not the guy who's being tough for him in the corner, or not the referee, not his opponent, not his brother, not, not the guy in the third row selling peanuts, but he's telling the doctor that he feels dizzy. Isn't that, I mean, I'm not a doctor, I don't even play one, but the truth of the matter is, that's a sign we all know 
is a sign of a concussion. Why would the doctor let him continue if he says to the doctor, I'm dizzy, but I want to continue? Shouldn't the doctor have stopped that fight right there? If he's a doctor who lacks experience, you never know. If he's a doctor who you know doesn't have a uh, fight experience, or maybe you know he only has one or two fight experience, and he looks more at you know what he sees on TV, what other fighters. But but Dax, but Dax, but but ringside doctors are basically at least in New York and New Jersey and Nevada and California reputable boxing commissions. They're neuro-based doctors. They're neuro, you know, uh, their, their specialty is, is neuro. You know, that's why they're looking in the eyes. You're not going to put a foot doctor uh, up ringside to help, a, uh, you know, uh, manage a fight and, and keep the fighter's safety. I mean, if this guy doesn't know, uh, if he's a doctor and he's appointed by the, the commission to, to, to make sure that the fighters are safe and a fighter's telling him that he's dizzy, I just don't understand why that fight wasn't stopped right then. And that's a question that uh, Virginia has. You know, Virginia's a small state. You know, they don't have a genuine athletic commission, let alone you know, a separate area for boxing or baseball, you know, like, like the bigger states have, as you mentioned. You know, they have uh, what's called a Department of Professional and Occupation Regulation. They handle a variety of things besides sports, though. That includes uh, cemetery plots, sewage, and auctioneer departments. Um, I spoke with Dave Holland, the executive director, and Dave was upset that, um, you know, this took place. And the second he found out that Pritchard would um, collapse in his dressing room or passed out, uh, he started the investigation. Uh, you know, where it is, how long it's going to take, he doesn't know. One thing for sure that, you know, they do feel that one or more people in charge that night failed their duties. And, you know, they are going to uh, look at, you know, the history of Terrell Williams, and uh, they're going to look at the history of Joseph Cooper, and i um, more than sure that the doctor's going to be questioned. Uh, you know, I spoke with Mary Brose Vaughn, who's a spokesperson for the DOPOR, who enforced what Dave Holland stated to me. And Mary and uh, Dave were both very cooperative in their comments. Matter of fact, Mary called me from her cell phone um, while she was out at lunch. Uh, neither sure uh, why the doctor, after Cologne stated he was dizzy after being knocked down, allowed it to uh, continue. I asked their opinion. They, they really had no answer, just like you and just like me. Um, they were also not entirely informed of Joseph Cooper's history. They seemed perplexed when, when I started to run some down why he was even given any assignments. Uh, definitely the, the behavior of Terrell Williams during the fight, uh, the fouls, uh, the attitudes, the gestures, the language, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, slash across the throw is something that, you know, they were very perturbed by. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, sooner than later this investigation uh, um, ended with them, but, you know, uh, and it, as soon as they can or if, uh, you know, they can find some sort of wrongdoing, uh, you know, they plan on, you know, implementing any sort of repercussions that they have within uh, their authority. Should it be refusal of a license to fight in Virginia for future events? Um, you know, should it be some sort of a, a misconduct action, whichever the case may be? I know that uh, Mary and I were talking on how, um, you know, a lot of times when it comes to the bigger states, if a fighter or an official isn't licensed, you know, most states won't follow. You know, most states won't allow them to, to fight there and she in her uh, most candid and honest answer she said that's the hopes of Virginia that you know if they do and being the fact they are a small state without a lot of pull if they do decide to implement any of these things that all the other states do follow and um, you know I, my concern is considering they are you know such a small state they don't have a particular uh, division to handle any sorts of these things, uh, they may not have the resources to conduct a proper investigation, and and um, or the pull, uh, you know, to get these punishments inflicted. Uh, the first and foremost that uh, they, they uh, did state continuously is that Pritchard Colon is their main concern and, and his future. Well, you know, we can't change what happened there. No, no, and and obviously that's the the main concern is is you know his recovery. But you know, I think it's the opposite though. You know, when you have a small commission, uh, not a lot of revenue, uh, not a lot of funds to, to operate, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you don't want to try to implement something and then hope other commissions follow you. You want to follow some of the other commissions that are already established with rules in place that are, are there. You know, I don't understand why some of these small commissions, uh, not just Virginia, but West Virginia and, and the Carolinas and, and Georgia and, and, you know, some of the states out west, 
uh, why don't I don't uh, try to implement you know solid proven uh, commissions like New York and Jersey and and California and Nevada I mean you know those are the big boys those are the ones that have strict rules but they they're in place to to uh, you know try to prevent stuff like this not that it never happens obviously uh, Mago Abdulzamov is is a great example in in the state of New York but I, I mean it is a risky sport um you keep alluding to Joseph Cooper and his history. Uh, what are some of the other things that this guy has done uh, that, in your opinion, should prevent him from ever refereeing a, a professional fight again? Well, it's you know it's not even um, yes, in my opinion, definitely. But uh, you know, some some of the history on Joseph Cooper. You know, keep in mind, you know, Joseph Cooper is a guy who, who several times has stated, and I've heard him. You know, I only have one chance to get a call right. I can't mistake into the ring. I don't have the luxury of instant replay. Um, in that sense, he's 100% correct. Um, he's also quick to remind people he is Dr. Joseph Cooper. Um, he, he, he feels very proud of this uh, Ph.D. that he's earned in uh, Pennsylvania University, I believe it was. And, and you should be proud of that. Well, you know, well, Dr. Cooper, in my opinion, you're not liable for medical malpractice, but you've committed uh, negligence uh, by breach of, of duty of reasonable care, certainly in my opinion. You know, in 1999, Bill, um, I don't know if you remember this, you should, uh, on ES, it was an ESPN fight. You know, um, it was an IBF uh, super flyweight title fight between Raul Warren and Mark Johnson. Uh, you know, I remember when Cooper warned Johnson uh, a few times in the third round about uh, keeping his gloves up, um, you know, and he said something, of course, over to uh, uh, Juarez as well. And in the fourth round, um, you know, Juarez had hit Johnson low, and instead of Cooper kind of stepping in there, um, you know, Johnson had time to re uh, retaliate. And I remember Teddy Atlas uh, calling the action, and I remember him saying, you know, I'm not taking the punches, but I think this is a sell job or, you know, something to that effect. Much how, you know, Ray Leonard was stating, uh, you know, uh, that he didn't really think Pritchard Cologne um, had the desire anymore. Um, um, instead of being disqualified, that was uh, declared in no contest. But point of the matter is, in, in there, uh, and the, the most disturbing part there is Juarez laid on the canvas in that ring for almost 10 minutes before being helped and removed on the stretcher you know and you know this is you know why are you letting a fighter lay there that long uh, you know in 2004 um, I, I watched a video and um, of uh, Everard Ramage and uh, he intentionally headbutted James Fitz I remember uh, Cooper takes a point instead of disqualifying him on the spot you know and anytime there's an intentional uh, headbutt you know somebody should be disqualified and said he takes a point luckily for Fitz in that fight he was able to stop Ramage in the third and rectify that situation himself you know much like how Joseph Cooper said uh, to Bridger Cologne take care of it yourself you know what I mean take care of it yourself you know what I mean you know um you know, in uh, 2009, in the Cristobal Cruz versus uh, Jorge Solis fight, uh, you know, he, he deducts a point from Cruz in round three for a headbutt. He, uh, he deducts another one for rough tactics. And then uh, Jorge Solis gets two at a time for intentional low blows in two separate rounds. Why were the, was there no uh, disqualification for either one there? He, he, he had plenty of reason to do it for either one of those fighters, uh, especially when you're doing two points at a time. You know, uh, uh, butts and rough house tactics and uh, pushing and elbows to the face are far more damaging than low blows when it comes to the long-term effect. And I don't think this man seems to get it. Um, I remember in, uh, um, I think it was uh, September of that year, in uh, Jimmy Langer's uh, Jonathan Reed, he was holding, uh, he was deducting points of the fighters for holding. He was all over Jonathan Reed. Uh, during that fight for everything, you know, and, um, you know, gee, where's Jimmy Lang from? Jimmy Lang is from Virginia, Jonathan Reed, further down south. In, um, in October of 2010, when Thomas Snow and uh, Jason Rory fought, Rory keeps getting deducted points for holding and headbutting. Um, you know, Snow was never deducted any points for any of his, uh, for, for any, any of his antics. Once again, Thomas Snow is from the D.C. area where Joseph Cooper officiates a lot of bouts. Rory from North Carolina. In August, of, in uh, June of 2011, uh, Andrew Farmer and um, Andre Baker fought. Baker suffered a shoulder injury in that. You know, Farmer's from Virginia, Baker's from North Carolina. This is not to say that Joseph Cooper had uh, any, anything to do with that. Injuries do happen, but, you know, it, it, he just happens to be the ref. In, uh, in September of 2011, Jimmy Lang and Ra uh, knocks out Raul Munoz in the sixth round. Munoz loses a point for, uh, he lost his mouthpiece in the fourth round, uh, you know, and he gets a point 
warning taken from it. Once again, no warnings for it. It just gets the point taken away. Now, Munoz is from Kansas. Once again, Jimmy Lane's from Virginia. In uh, December of 2011, we all remember the Lam Lamont Peterson and Amir Khan fight. Lamont Peterson from Washington, D.C., where Cooper officiates a lot, if not most of his bouts. They referenced this on PBC several times. Marv Albert did, uh, you know, on, on how that fight cost Amir Khan the win. You know, Khan was deducted the points, and I think it was for pushing in the seventh, another one in the twelfth. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the scores in that fight, I think, were uh, 115, 110, and then uh, 112, 113 twice. Um, you know, and that's, again, you know, that cost Amir Khan to win with those two points. Um, in uh, 2013, uh, there was an injury in another one of his fights between uh, uh, Jamil Mansour and Gilbert Jacobs. I think Jacobs uh, hurt his hand. Um, and then, of course, we have this fight with, with Terrell Williams and, and Pritchard Cologne, which, you know, we've gone over. This isn't a guy who has hundreds and hundreds of fights under him. He's got less than 100 fights that he's officiated. His biggest fight that he's handled, his two biggest fights that he handled with the Amir Khan and, and was the one with Mark Johnson, and he blew him nationally on TV, and everybody's seen it. This, this isn't, uh, this isn't uh, I heard this, or you see this, or I pass it on. These are available for people to see, Bill. You know, uh, uh, one last question I, I have on, on this and uh, uh, is this. From your discussions with the uh, people from Virginia Commission or whatever they call it there, um, are they planning on reviewing or any type of uh, reprimand for, for Joseph Cooper, or are they totally, you know, sidestepping that uh, he did anything wrong? They're looking at everybody. You know, as I, I might not have stated, but I believe I stated before, that um, they're very, they're, they're bothered. And, you know, they, they kind of did not get, uh, you know, the full background on Joseph Cooper, you know, being that they are so small that, you know, they don't, maybe don't have the resources to do these background checks. You know, m most importantly, when you look at these two fighters, Bill, um, you know, Terrell Williams has a history of this, a history. He didn't have a lot of fights. And he has a history. In 2011, when he, uh, he fought Andre Hill at the Hollywood Park Casino in Englewood, nine blows behind the head, nine of them. The crowd was calling him dirty. They were screaming at him. Nine blows behind the head. I can get people the still shots when he fought Marquise Jackson. You know, uh, in round one at the 240, the 54, the 46, the 41, the 216, the 1212 uh, mark, the 145 mark. You know, he hits uh, uh, Jackson in the back of the head, the 225 mark. He lands with a kidney shot. He does the same thing he did with Richard Colon. His eyes focused on it every single time. Uh, you know, why? There was another fight there. Wayne Hedgepath, when uh, Marcus uh, Jackson was down on the floor, he's crawling on his hands and knees. And Wayne Hedgepath allows him to get back up. Um, you know, and uh, between rounds, uh, uh, Jackson uh, exhibited a lot of the same behaviors after that that knockdown that uh, Pritchard Cologne did, where, you know, he seemed dizzy, uh, out of breath for no reason. And, um, you know, this, and again, he, you know, he did this. Uh, you know, this is a guy right here, Bill, that, you know, even though uh, uh, Marquis Jackson is, is an opponent, you know, this is a guy that before fighting Marcus Jackson, the only time he was ever stopped was by the Cuban amateur star, your Dennis Ugas. Um, now, Tony Harrison, Dusty Hernandez Harrison, we know uh, Tony Harrison is a monster puncher, much bigger than, than uh, Terrell Wynn. He wasn't able to stop him. You know, so, and, and you know, one and. What are the odds that, you know, Terrell Williams is just landing these blows again and again and again, and, and nothing is being done about this? And he openly states several interviews you know, for several different outlets you know, by any means necessary. There's a bigger problem here, Bill. The big problem now is the future. You know, Terrell Williams is a marked fighter. There's fighters out there who are going to look at him. They know what he did. No fighter is going to sit there and, and, and give, any, give any pull. And, you know, no fighter is going to uh, take that risk of you know, allowing this guy to hit him in the back of the head. And, you know, there's a lot of outrage by a lot of fighters. Uh, you know, and then on the other hand, too, a lot of people just, you know, a lot of uh, commissions, a lot of uh, promoters, uh, networks, they all need to worry about what's going to happen if they put this guy in their card. You know, there's no place in boxing for somebody like Terrell Williams. There's nobody in boxing for a uh, place for boxing for somebody like Joseph Cooper. You know, one's going to end up, you know, uh, costing somebody, you know, a big money fight. 
and Joseph Cooper actually already has. The other one's going to end up costing somebody their life, you know, and, you know, hopefully, you know, this isn't that time and situation. Joseph Cooper is the worst kind of referee because he's the worst kind of employee. Anybody who does something for, for a fee bill is an employee. Joseph Cooper is paid for his services. He said he just shows up for, for that paycheck. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do. When is he going to do what he's supposed to do? When is somebody going to make Joseph Cooper do what he's supposed to do? When is Joseph Cooper going to get fired? We can't have this in the sport anymore. Well, you did a great job on, on this, Dax. Uh, before I let you go, uh, what's the story with, with Pritchard Cologne? I know you've been in touch with the family. Um, is it? Do they have no clue of, of, of the potential recovery? Is he going to recover? Uh, do they feel that, that it looks good for him? I mean, what's the status with him right now? Uh, I've seen um, said earlier that I know that I uh, had read an update from Ricardo um, a little while ago, and, you know, he said, you know, today the doctor in charge of Pritchard gave the green light to the nurses to take him off the sedation, meaning that, you know, they don't they don't have him on that constant drip to keep him in that deep uh, um, induced coma. Uh, you know, uh, the doctor, uh, he has communicated uh, with Columbus. Uh, they reported they have done everything possible uh, for Pritchard. And the only thing to do is wait until he wakes up. Uh, you know that there's uh, nothing more that you can do now. Is just see what happens when he, you know, when he wakes up. You, you can't predict what happens in a situation like this. You know, all you can do is pray. There's a lot of uh, gyms, uh, um, businesses, um, you know, parks, and charity groups across the country that have had over the last three or four days. They they they've had you know um, prayer sessions where everybody sat around and 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 they said words you know in a group you know praying for the recovery of Pritchard Cologne. You know this is a good kid. Everybody wants to see him recover. You know, obviously his, his boxing career is over. Right now it's just important that he wakes up and he has all his faculties about him. At 23 years old, there's a long life after boxing. You know, nope. across social media right now, you know, um, the only thing anybody's saying, you know, they, they got a chant. You know, it's a wake up, happy, one more round chant. He's got one more round, Bill. Well, I tell you what, Dax, uh, great job, and I hope you uh, keep us posted as soon as you hear something. Uh, you can give us an update tomorrow, I guess, uh, when we come on. Uh, uh, hopefully this kid will uh, snap out of it, and then we can uh, uh, move forward from there, man. But uh, great job. That's I know you've been... Do. I know you've been... That's all we can do, Bill, is just hope and, you know, that the powers that, that, that be, you know, somebody follows through with this. Not, not because of ratings, not because of uh, uh, public outcry, what people are saying, not because of what's trending on, on Twitter or Facebook, just because, you know, what happened. It, it, it was wrong. Let's not have it happen to somebody else again. We've seen it too many times in the past several years. Neglecting the sport is not something we can have. I agree with you. Great job, and I know uh, you've been spending a lot of time on it, so... Uh uh, we'll catch you uh, and your thoughts on the fights and stuff tomorrow, man. Absolutely. Everybody enjoy your evening. All right, brother. Take care. That's my man Dax Khan, who uh, uh, has been uh, pretty pretty uptight about this whole uh, Pritchard Cologne situation. And, uh, you know, I, I spoke to him uh, a couple of times on the way back uh, from uh, uh, St. Simon's when we did our event, and he was jacked up then, and he just went on this uh, crusade to uh, dig into the whole situation and uh, a very thorough report uh, on uh, the actions or lack of of uh, Joseph Cooper uh, and, and, in my opinion, the, the ringside physician uh, totally blew it there as, as well. Uh, you know, I, these smaller commissions, you know, I, I'm one of these guys that oppose a government run uh, boxing commission. I oppose it because I feel that uh, it could be just as corrupt as anything else. What I do support is some type of overseeing organization similar to the ABC that actually does something rather than just, you know, uh, go through the motions. And I personally think, and you guys have heard me talk about this many times uh, with Larry Hazard, uh, that I believe that uh, we should have standardized uh, medical requirements, uh, both uh, uh, you know during a fight, uh, prior to a fight, and after a fight. I think all the states should uh, be forced to follow the same medical requirements. I know it costs money, uh, but I think in the long run, uh, it'll be uh, a heck of a lot safer. Uh, for the fighters, so sad situation, and uh, hopefully uh, Pritchard Cologne can uh, can snap out of it. But uh, 